All right, this is part two of our review of our introduction to polynomials unit. This is a test review. Um, in the first part, we did problems one through eight, which look like this. Okay, we did some terminology. We added and subtracted, and we multiplied functions. But now we're picking up with number nine and 10, binomial expansion, Pascal's triangle. What's up? Well, first of all, you have to be able to build Pascal's triangle. All right, Pascal's triangle works like this. You start off with a tiny triangle of ones. Then you start adding things up and putting the sum in the middle. So one plus one is two, so we put a two here. Um, on the ends of the row, we will always put ones. If I add up these, one plus two is three, two plus one is three. Put some ones on the ends, y'all. Add these up, you get four. Add these up, you get six. Add these up, you get four again. Put some ones on the end. Hmm, add these up, five. Add these up, 10. Add them up, another 10. Add these up, five. Put those ones on the end. I'm gonna just go one more row and then that'll be enough. Add these up, you get six. Add these, 15. 10 plus 10, 20. 10 plus five, back to 15. And five plus one, it's back to six the ones on the end. Now the point of uh, Pascal's triangle is um, if I want to do binomial expansion, in other words a binomial raised to a power, these numbers will wind up being, uh, each row represents the coefficients of a uh, binomial once you expand it. Uh, all you need to know is the power, you know the degree to which you are raising the binomial. So for example, if I had a binomial to the zero power, that's the first row. Okay, the second row is a binomial to the first power. It's a zero power. Okay, OCD rules me sometimes. That zero is bothering me. Okay, that's much better. Um, and then it goes from there. Just understand that you start from zero and then you go one, and then you go two, okay? So these would be the coefficients of a binomial to the second power. Binomial to the third power. Binomial to the fourth power. To the fifth power. to the sixth power. And I could keep on going from there as long as I needed to. All right, so what of it? Um, so in order to do a problem like number nine, I'm gonna need to zoom in, that's for sure. First, we need to observe the degree, uh, the exponent to which we are raising this binomial of y minus three. The degree is four. So uh, as we look at our chart here, uh, we find the coefficients on this row when you have degree four. So the coefficients will be one, four, six, four, one. Let's copy that down. Again, the coefficients were one, four, six, four, one. Let me just double check real quick fourth power one four six four one okay these should be the coefficients of the polynomial once I expand this okay so this is to avoid having to sit here and go y minus okay <clears throat> we're avoiding having to do y minus three times y minus three times y minus three times y minus three if we had to do this out by hand it would take a really long time this is much much quicker um, these coefficients uh, always start out positive, 
So let's put some pluses down there. Next, we look at the uh, term on the left side. Okay, in this case, it's a y. So this is on the left, so we start out to the left. And we start out with the degree of the problem. So we have y to the fourth power. Now we will do decreasing degree as we go to the right. <clears throat> so this will be y to the third power, y squared, and just plain y. And then this last term gets a zero y. So it's like four, three, two, one, zero. Uh, then we look at the second term. And go ahead and look at this as negative three, you guys. Negative three. Okay. So um, the negative three is on the right. So we start on the right with it. And again, we start with a degree. So it'll be negative three to the fourth power and then negative 3 cubed, negative 3 squared, and then just a plain negative 3, and then the last one doesn't get any. Okay. Um, what are we going to do now? So, I always recommend simplifying the powers first, okay, if there's anything to do. So, in this case, I'm talking about these negative threes to these powers, negative three squared, negative three to the third power, and so on. Um, so let's do that next. Everything else, we're just going to keep it the same. So we still have, we have one, four, six, four, one. And uh, the variable part is staying the same too. We have y to the fourth power, y to the third power, y squared and y. So now let's do the green part, uh, you know, evaluating as we go. So first we have just negative 3, so there's really nothing to do with that. So that stays negative 3. But negative 3 squared is positive 9. Be careful of your signs. Okay, this is negative 3 times negative 3. That's a positive 9. Um, this one is going to make negative 27. Okay, if you raise an, a negative number to an even power, it turns positive. If you take a negative number and raise it to an odd power, like 3, it stays negative. And if for some reason you were uh, going to not trust me on that one, then you could use your calculator and kind of, uh, you know, check it out. Let's see if I can move this over. Okay, so for example, just make sure you use parentheses. So if I do negative 3, okay, negative 3 raised to the third power, that's negative 27. Okay, but on the other hand, if I do negative 3 raised to the fourth power, that's positive 81 okay odd power stays negative even power turns you positive okay so we just saw that negative 3 to the fourth power was positive 81 okay so now we can go ahead and do the multiplication on this next step in fact uh, this is going to be the final answer so let's just get ready for the final answer. Um, somebody keeps texting me. I wonder who it is. Psych, it's my wife. Um, this is, uh, it's funny because she texts me from like upstairs. She's in the house texting me. Do you guys do that? Is that weird? I think it's weird. Um, if you multiply these things together, so I've got four times negative three. Um, and I'm saying it like she's the only one who, who does it. I, I text her upstairs from the basement where I am all the time. Or I'll text my daughter to take out the trash, and she's like in her room. So if it's weird, we're, we're all weird. So I'm not judging. Um, anyway, I just want to clear that up. So 6 times 9 is 54. So uh, this is going to be positive 54y squared. What do we have here? Um, we have negative 27 times 4. I'm going to have to check that out real quick. Okay, so that's negative 27 
times 4. Uh, it's negative 108. Okay, so negative 108. Y. And then, of course, we just have the 81. So plus 81. So that's it. This would be your answer for number 9. Now, I don't feel like you are really given enough space to do this problem. I was only able to do it because I zoomed in, uh, made it really big, so it gave the illusion of having more space. All right, I guess we'll just have to live with it. All right, okay, um, number 10. Same thing. It is cubed. So when we look at our chart, we see that the uh, third power expansion has coefficients 1, 3, 3, 1. So let's copy that. Roger, copy that. So we have 1, 3, 3, 1. one. I'll go ahead and put plus 3, plus 3, plus 1. I like to space things out, uh, as you can see. Okay, now, once again, we're going to start on the left um, with this guy, 4z. Please put it in parentheses for me, guys, always. So this is on the left, so I start with 4z on the left. And now this is to the third power. And then I decrease as I go. So I'll have 4z squared. And then on this one, I'll have 4z. And this one doesn't get any. And uh, let's see, what's, what's next? I feel like using this bright green for this one. I hope you can see it. Um, on the right-hand side, we have this 5. So uh, we're going to start off way over here on the right-hand side with 5. Still starting with the degree of the whole problem. So 5 to the third power. And then 5 squared. And then 5. And then the last one doesn't get any. Now, um, so that's your setup. And we do partial credit. So if you set it up right, you'll get you know a certain amount of points. Um, now, on the next step, you want to do any exponents you have. So all this third power squared, squared, third power. Uh, let's do those exponents now. But I'm going to start by just bringing down the, the uh, coefficients, which are not going to change. So I still have 1, 3, 3, 1. I still have that. Now, um, let's do the 4z, you know, like the variable part next, the blue. <coughs> 4z to the third power. Common mistake. A lot of kids were not raising the number to the third power. That's why I put in parentheses to remind you. 4 to the third power is 64. Okay, um, so this is going to make 64z to the third power. Okay, you got to cube them both. Similarly, right here, you have to square them both. So 4 squared is 16. So it's 16z squared. OK? And then this is just 4z. So that's all the blue stuff. Now let's do all the green stuff, all right? Because it has some powers as well. OK? Uh, this 5 is just going to stay like it is because it has no power. But um, this is going to be 25 because 5 squared. And uh, 5 to the third power is 125. OK, so we did all the exponents. So now we're ready to do the multiplication. This is the third and final step. So in general, you should have three lines. Your setup, then you do your powers, and then you do your multiplication. And that your multiplication is your final answer. OK, so. Um, this 1 is not doing anything. So this is just 64z to the third power. Um, now, over here, we have three numbers to multiply. 3 times 16 times 5. OK, 3 times 16 times 5. So that is 240. OK, so that's why we're going to have 240z squared, all right? The z squared is still there. Next, 
um, we have 4, 3 times 4 times 25. Now, you should be able to do this in your head because you know that 4 times 25 is 100, right? 4 quarters is a dollar. And then 3 times 100 is 300. So you should know that this is going to be 300Z. Now, that was the name of, of a sports car in like the 90s. It was a Nissan 300Z. Um, anyway, if somehow you're not following the whole 300 business, I guess you're going to use a calculator. 3 times 4 times 25. Okay, 3 times 4 times. Uh, whoops, that wasn't the times button. 3 times 4 times 25. Okay, and sure enough, it's 300. Um, and then this last bit is just, uh, you know, 1 times 125 is just 125. So that's it. This would be your answer for number 10. Okay. Now, even though we only did two problems of this binomial expansion, um, this video is already 16 minutes long. So, yeah, 8 minutes per problem. Not great. Nevertheless, I'm stopping this video now. I think I might go take a nap. You know what I'm saying? I got two and a half hours of sleep last night. I can't really function. It's only 8.07. Yeah, I'm going to go to sleep for a few hours. I will see you on the next video after a nap. Peace.